Cool. So now, Quorum, if selected, you're going to be going, your kind of life will just be an open book to everybody watching here. You'd be seeing the training process they go through once you go to Mars, seeing you living there on Mars. How do you feel about not only necessarily being the first person that could possibly be on Mars, but also just having your life being such an open book to everybody else that would be watching? Yeah. Well, one of the most important parts of, of science, uh, good science is good observation. And to do that correctly, everything needs to be very well documented. So uh, with any sort of experiment, you take as much data as you can. And this is just going to be a part of the process of how we're collecting as much data as possible. This is an experiment. <laughs> not only for the technologies to see if we're capable of relocating to a, an alien world and sustaining a habitat there, but also uh, as an experiment on if we as humans can leave this comfortable environment we've spent the last couple of hundred thousand years becoming accustomed to and adopt a new environment with a lot of different influences. So that, that's all part of the science as well, and documenting that's going to be very, very important. So, it's all part of the process of being able to do this experiment and uh, be able to share it back with Earth, which is, you know, I don't want to go to Mars and have a look around if uh, I don't get to give that information back to the rest of humanity. So uh, it's all just a very important part of the process, and I'm happy to embrace it. Now, one of the things, though, is that you'd be going all the way to Mars, but as Dr. Kraft has said before, it's that, that once, you've, once the four people leave, I mean, you are on your own. You are free pretty much to do what you want. So how do you feel about having that sort of open, just that just openness when you get to Mars? You're capable to do anything you'd like. King of Mars. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yes, there'll definitely be a bit of freedom, but we'll still be very well bound in, in the constraints of what the mission is capable of. So we're going to be, whichever human cargo ends up, on the way to Mars to adopt this, uh, this habitats and, and establish life there are going to be on very extremely limited resources and they're going to have to stick pretty much to the plan. Uh, and it's going to be very, very difficult and there's still going to be a lot of support required from Earth in the form of information, um, further things uh, arriving, maybe backup parts or uh, as time goes on, depending on the, the funding available, hopefully there'll be plenty so that we can have things like uh, emergency uh, habitats or an expansion of the habitat system. Uh, so we'll still be very, very closely connected with Earth and, mm -hmm. of course, uh, giving back that information all the time too of what we're discovering and learning through the whole process of this mission. Uh, so I don't feel like we'll be at all separated from Earth and from humanity, uh, more of just an extension with a little bit of a 20-minute delay between us and them. But, it's, I'd like it to still be a very, very collective process and with as much interaction back with Earth as possible with distance, time, and, and communications allowing. Now, Dr. Kraft, I think that may be a popular misconception with people. When they think that you're going to Mars, they think that as you're so removed, you send them there, that's it, you're never going to see or hear from them again. But technology has certainly advanced over the last 30, 40 years where that connection, even though it is an incredible distance away, physically, at least technologically, it is still able to still be able to ma maintain a, a semblance of just regular day-to-day -day contact with people. Yes, that's why we, we are sending in 2018 the first satellite already up, and we will have a second satellite. So we will have a delay, but they will get the information. We will can be able to contact them 24 hours a day. If you count the delay, and it's like TiVo at home, you just see it a little bit later, mm -hmm. but you actually feel like in real time after that, and that's the information they get too. So we will be, and we want to be constant, contact with them and we want, and as he said too, uh, he wants to send us what do we give back. And everybody wants to know what they are doing there, how they are doing and, and so on. So everybody can be part of their life. And sooner or later it will play on that it looks like real if it's actually set six minutes, ten minutes or fifty minutes later, but it looks like they are in your living room you know, <laughs> just being on Mars. So yes, they will have constant contact. Yeah. Now, I uh certainly part of the process is you're going to be there with three other people. And, I mean, these are people you're going to be spending for the next two years together just on, a, on another planet. So how comfortable you, do you have, like, pet peeves or things like that? You already think in your head, like, all right, I've got to, I've got to tell Dr. Kraft that I don't want this, 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 and this for the people that I'm going to be sharing the next two years with. <laughs> no, uh, that's part of the opportunity we have between now and then with a lot of the training. So it's not just going to be individual training for the individual 
candidates to become skilled and conditioned enough to handle the stresses of the mission, but also to, to group together and start to form dynamic groups of four over that time. But these people really need to become each other's new family, and if they're going to be living together in such high stress and close-knit conditions for a long time, uh, they'll need to develop a bond far before departing from Mars, and that's all the part of the opportunity we have between now and the schedule of Mars today is to sort of build these relationships and to find these little dynamic groups of four that are going to be able to support and help and complement each other well enough under some really, really demanding conditions and, and some really elated conditions as well. There'll be some fantastic triumphs and, and the potential for some tragedy. So hopefully the groups that form and are selected beforehand will be able to support each other really, really well under all sorts of conditions and will have learned to deal with most of each other's idiosyncrasies before then. Now, Cor, I'm wrapping up there. You're going to be possibly one of the first team that's selected to go over there. You could be possibly one of the first persons to step foot on Mars. Now, with your acting background, I'm sure you know the importance of delivering a line well. So, have you thought about what you'd want to say if you're the first person to step foot on Mars? Uh, I've actually taken a few notes. I've been brainstorming that already, but we haven't quite locked in it in yet. I guess we have a fair bit of time between uh, Earth's departure and Mars arrival to maybe uh, agree on something profound. <laughs> yeah, can you just give us a, just like, what are a couple ideas that are just kind of bouncing in your head? Certainly, you're not locked into anything, but what, what are you thinking of right now? Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, well, I like the extension of the, the famous, uh, the very first uh, setting foot on, on another small world, so extension of one small step for man, but I'd probably like to go more along the lines of uh, Maybe, well, it's a tough one. <laughs> so, uh, embracing an idea of, of all of humanity and really putting forth the idea that this is the first, the, the first, well, the next step on a broader dream and a broader expansion of us as a species and a, and a real celebration that we're able to achieve this dual world occupation. And that's uh, something that I think will really spin off well in the future of this mission as future generations are learning about the people living on Mars and, and growing up with that understanding that we are a, a, now a dual world species and coexist on two planets and can share information back and forth. So uh, I'd like to sort of wrap that all up into one brilliant, profound sentence for whoever steps out of the habitat module and, and first lays foot in the dust on Mars. Well, I, I have to say, Gorham, uh, you're certainly better, cap uh, better suited to do this. My first line would be nothing near, nowhere near as profound as what you're coming up with right now. So that's why I wouldn't be selected for this mission. <laughs> Gorham, wish you the best of luck with the ongoing process of being selected. Hopefully we get to see you be one of the first people to set foot on Mars. Thank you very, very much for your time. Take care, Gorham. Take care. All right. Dr. Kraft and I will be back here in a little bit here. You're watching the Internet's talk show. It's watchhollywood.tv.